When parents first learn that their child will not be able to experience life as other children do, there may be a sense of loss both of the child's future and of the parent's own hopes and expectations. Ultimately, the parents would like to see more empathy and for other parents to accept their children just as they would like their own children to be accepted.
uh, when they get a job, they do it to the best of their ability. Mm -hmm. They don't lie. They don't know how to lie. Oh, okay. yeah. Uh, um, they don't even know when you are when, when you are not serious. Like if you tell that a child or a person you don't see, pull up your socks. Mm. They will literally pull up their socks. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So then it's black and white. Mm -hmm. they, that, that's 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 the language they know. Okay. Yes, you yes. have to do that because mm -hmm. one thing, some of them they don't know nature, mm -hmm. so they won't know how to get out of the road. Mm -hmm. Or yeah, they have no sense of danger. They will see a swimming pool and then. Then they will see they want to swim, so they will go jump exactly. into this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So someone has to be there for them. Yeah. And majority of so them are non verbal. Okay. So they are not able to express themselves. Mm -hmm. Others could be verbal, mm -hmm. but they just repeat what you say. Like, mm -hmm. I want food. They will read, I will want food. Yeah. What is your name? What is your name? Mm -hmm. So they have speech, but it is not making sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like, they are repeating everything you are saying. Photographic memory. Oh, really? Like I know my son, if he sees you today, mm -hmm. and five years to come we meet, he'll mm -hmm. say hello to you, he'll hug you. Okay. So the, he knows his family. Mm -hmm. He knows his family, he knows the people who live with him, mm -hmm. and people who pay it. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's oh, able sorry. to identify, like, this is where we come to, to work. And another thing we need to mention here is the routine people. Routine meaning they don't like changing, changing, let's say, their roots. Mm -hmm. Like if they wake up in the morning, they start with this, mm -hmm. they start, and then the next one, and the next one. Mm -hmm. When you disrupt that routine, it, um, it affects them. You follow one route to go to the shop, mm -hmm. that is the same route you should follow always, otherwise okay. they'll get upset. Okay. And if you have to change their routine, mm -hmm. you need to tell them in advance. Oh, really? You need to tell them in advance, like, we are going to the shop and we are going to follow a different route. Mm -hmm. Even if they are not answering you, they, they understand. Mm -hmm. Some will also get very, very offended if they are visitors and they deal with visitors who are coming. Oh. So you need to tell them, like, even like, if you have visitors who will tell them in advance from today, uh -huh. we'll be having visitors. And then repeat, you'll be having visitors tomorrow. Okay. So they will either have tram trams mm -hmm. or they go and buy, hide themselves somewhere else. Very little difference, mm -hmm. very little difference, but it is there mm -hmm. because he can feed himself. Mm -hmm. um, he can go to the bathroom on his own. Okay. I can ask him to go and serve himself food. Okay. Yeah, so there's a difference. Little, but it is there. Okay. The, the hardest part of this in John or, or persons with autism mm -hmm. is the society. There's a lot of stigma. Yeah, and you, you go to, you're walking around, you go to the supermarket, there are a lot of stairs, and people are not even asking you why. I would rather someone ask me what is wrong with your son. Okay. But people just stare. Mm -hmm. um, families also get alienated. Mm -hmm. You find you don't have. With friends or people who used to be your friends are no longer your friends, mm -hmm. and you also find uh, socially you are left alone. You can um, yeah, like uh, you can't be in every chamber, every, every fellowship you want to be in mm -hmm. because the chamber needs you too. Mm -hmm. So that way, the society as well and the community are in that scene. So it's, it's actually quite lonely. How I've been able to overcome it is to talk about it. Yeah, like uh, we, we, you, you meet someone and they're uh, looking at your son. Mm -hmm. You tell them like, yeah, this is my son, he's got so and so. Mm -hmm. And just greet him, like he likes being hurt, he likes greeting people. Mm -hmm. So you find people want to run away from him. They don't want to, to be greeted or they don't want to be hurt. Mm -hmm. So I, okay, of course I stop him to hurt. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not easy, he'll just go hurt. Mm -hmm. But I'll go and explain to them, like, this is his condition. Okay. Yeah. And then lighten them. Yeah, then lighten them. So uh -huh. getting awareness. With me, we do have a therapy center here mm -hmm. where kids are brought for occupational therapy mm -hmm. and ABA, behavior modification.
Foundation. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, we have an outreach program at Kahawa Sukari. Mm -hmm. There's a church, we, we have a program. We partner with a church called St. Joseph Catholic Church. Okay. So they have a program called Uja mm -hmm. And those, the children who come there are not able to pay for the services. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a good center place for the therapists to go there every Tuesday. Mm -hmm. And every Friday mm -hmm. uh, for free therapy. Mm -hmm. So kids are brought there. And those are not just autistic children who are brought there. Mm -hmm. They are children with different special needs. Okay. Yeah. And um, we, also, we do have social butterfly events. Mm -hmm. We've partnered with Premier Academy and ISK International School of Kenya, where we take children with autism mm -hmm. to meet with their buddies, we call them buddies. Mm -hmm. Like every every month we have two social butterfly events, one, one at Premier and the other at ISK. Mm -hmm. So when the kids go there, mm -hmm. they are paired. Mm -hmm. A child with autism and a child, a neurotypical child. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, a child with autism will be paired with two buddies. Mm -hmm. And they have fun mm -hmm. when the weather allows, they do swimming. They do painting, mm -hmm. they do play football, mm -hmm. and then they, they share snacks after that. Okay. Yeah, so that is part of our awareness and also bringing these children out from, from their houses. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's free. Raising a child with autism is one of the hardest things a parent can ever have to do. It is an overwhelming challenge. She was given an expired vaccination. And the children who were vaccinated with her then, most of them died. So since then have been in and out of hospital. She was like a born, just a baby born child. She, she had not gained strength even to sit or even, even the neck had not held. So this happened at four years. This is when she was able to sit. She worked at eight years. Most of them, they are, they are never there for me. But there are others who are loyal. Most people don't want to be near me because she's screaming. And uh, even the house girls, those who have not had such an experience, they just can't study it. It's like a, a drama, you know? Everybody is standing to you like, this is not a human being. Condition where children are not able to interact with their environment. They are not social, so they don't have the social skills. They, you begin to communicate in other languages, the language of touch, the language of love, hugs, you know, the language of drawing, coloring. They tend to be very um, hyperactive sometimes. Yeah, and so some of the, the sugar, the food that leads more to or tends more to very sugary foods, foods that are high in gluten, so things that are very high in uh, wheat content, we tend to lower that. And that is to help them um, have a healthy gut microbial um, system, so healthy gut flora, that's what we call it. Rearing a child with autism often contributes to marital problems, problems with other children, and job instability. And they should not hide them. They should be encouraged and bring them to schools and take them to hospitals. We have kind people and God will see us through. Appreciating that child, you accept that that child has that condition and you walk the journey. And the journey is therapy, diet, love and all will be well up to half of all children with autism spectrum disorder experience behavioral problems the child may have tantrums become aggressive the main, the main reason I, I even opened the account is to train to train the young adults so that they can get women uh, work together in other cultures yeah. where they come from and do something Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
Autism is a lifelong development disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact. Many autistic adults and children have a moderate to severe language problems, language delays, while some never develop any languages. Uh, at my all. name is Linda, and we're doing a story on autism. Umependea, umekua, ikazi mekua ziku wako, ikazi ya kawash. Going on is not that much. Not bad. Na umeza kupata mabishti, some friends. Have you made friends? Once I reach, mm -hmm. I walk once, once I do, mm -hmm. then it comes once I reach, once I come. Okay. Mm -hmm. And it comes uh, once, once I reach. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's your favorite uh, food? Fried. 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 Pena chips. No, not chips. Uh. Uh, Pena chocolate is going to spice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lunch. Ah. Okay. Ah. What do you like watching on TV? Mom's watching too. Huh? Dad is watching. You like watching TV? My mom, yeah. Your mom. And you? I like to watch it. You like watching? Yeah, once and once and watch Ah, and cartoons? Watch cartoons? Yeah, my mom is watching. You watch cartoons? Yeah. You like them? What's your favorite song? Dad did it. Ah. Uh, you like? He did. Huh? He did. He did it. Did. You haven't seen it? Yeah, oh, okay. Thank you. Do you like dancing? Uh, do you like dancing? Not really, but I don't like dancing. You don't like dancing? Ah, okay. Sour. What's Thanks. your name? Miri. 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 Yeah, Miri. Every child or adult affected with autism spectrum disorder has unique abilities, symptoms and challenges. While some have shown general awareness on autism, the lack of knowledge about the syndrome and its effects to those involved is really unfortunate. And for the organization Autism Support Center Kenya, I'm the chairperson. Okay, I actually co-founder of this organization in 2012. So been working since 2012, mostly with kids with autism and sometimes other developmental disabilities in Nairobi. Uh, also my training was in special education okay. and uh, in nine of my training sometimes I have also interacted with, uh, not just training but after the training I've interacted with kids with, um, uh, you know, or just on the borderline. Not really, we can't say they would fit in a uh, just the mainstream, but on the other hand, they may not fit in special schools, so they are just on the borderline. Uh, those are the most of the kids I have dealt with. I've never taught in a school for the uh, mainstream uh, or the neurotypical kids. I'll, I'll say it's the most amazing job because a uh, person with autism just they are themselves in terms of they give the best and uh, they, they don't have anything hidden. 
So the glory is when you see them experiencing challenges, like uh, you know, sometimes they get outpassed, uh, that is them, and uh, it's a way of trying to express themselves. But on the other hand, it's so exciting because um, there are people who are very cheerful, there are people who, who do things that sometimes make you laugh and make you happy. And uh, having that positive sort of uh, attitude uh, in, and working with them has been very, very helpful. Because uh, if you don't have positive attitude, sometimes it can be very frustrating because you want to blame them for issues that they are it's sometimes beyond their control. And uh, the idea is always to uh, try to bring the best out of them and to see them as people who just need your help to be the best they can. And um, this is what you have been doing. Always trying to look for ways that we can demystify autism and we can actually face the challenge and help these kids overcome the obstacles that come their way. Because they have many obstacles, including being accepted in the society. And uh, also learning for them sometimes is a challenge because uh, you, you have to be very innovative uh, to be able to reach out to them and to have a very personal relationship with each of the students so that they can win their trust and uh, that way it helps a lot and at the moment you win their trust then you are able to see what you see not as some challenge as such but just as a beautiful uh, situation that you can actually play a critical role in trying to help so this has been the case yeah the most distinct or distinctive uh, difference uh, is um, the approach we use in the, in the training and also in teaching. When you're being trained as a special needs teacher, uh, you're trained to teach an individual, not as a class. Normally, uh, teachers are trained to teach a class or a subject, but in our case, you're supposed to teach an individual. So even in the lesson plan, you're not just planning for the whole class. You are planning for each child. And uh, of course, uh, it requires a lot of commitment. It requires passion and uh, focus. Uh, and of course, a lot of patience. Uh, because when you are teaching a child, uh, as opposed to the class, because for a class, you just want to get a mean score, you just want to see the performance of the entire class. But here is a situation where you focus on the performance of each student and this performance you are talking about is not necessarily academic performance as such, but it's a holistic sort of approach that we have, that every small progress for us is a big achievement. A child, for example, would come to school uh, without the, the ability to, uh, for example, to go to the toilet by themselves, and you have to teach that child toilet, toilet uh, you know, skills. Uh, the child may not be able to know how to switch off the, the lights. You have to teach them. So everything is a learning experience. And uh, you look at autism, a uh, person with autism, and uh, you don't make any assumption. You teach them everything, including how to dress. It's something that doesn't matter their age. Uh, it, what matters is uh, at what time are they taught what skill. So you can see somebody who is 15 or 20 years. They don't know simple, uh, there are many things that we take for granted or we just look at, we make, or we assume that this is obvious, but for them it's not obvious. Including tying the shoelaces, the persons who are over 20 will come tie their own shoelaces, uh, among other uh, areas that uh, we, interact with, uh, we interact with them or it is. Okay, um, you know what happens with the uh, person with disabilities and uh, what is it being among them? Sometimes uh, the normal curriculum is what is mostly used, but with adapt, uh, adaptations. So you adapt certain areas according to the need of the person with autism, some uh, students with autism. But on the other hand, uh, uh, the curriculum for person with autism, uh, I know uh, Kenya uh, Institute of Health and Development has come up with uh, a specific curriculum for those who don't know, uh, in collaboration with Kenya Institute of Special Education and other stakeholders. Uh, and also, uh, in most cases, as I say, a teacher has to be very innovative. 
um, you can still draft uh, based on the uh, normal curriculum you can draft some areas uh, so that uh, it fits uh, the needs of those with autism. And uh, you also realize the curriculum for those with autism uh, goes beyond just the normal curriculum. There are areas that are not in the normal curriculum, like for example, uh, activities for daily living or functional skills, uh, where you teach persons with autism. Uh, skills that they can that can help them in life. Basic skills, you know, like dressing, uh, brushing, uh, teeth, and uh, maybe even brushing the hair, or you know, doing so those simple things. Uh, so a curriculum for those uh, with autism may be either slightly different from the normal curriculum, the regular curriculum, or it may be totally different depending on the need or, or the level of ability of person with autism. And that's why I say you also teach, uh, in, in uh, special education, you teach the specific child. And so as a teacher, you are the one who also has to do a lot of innovations, has, has to do a lot of adaptations, but of course through the guidance of the curriculum that is already there and the normal curriculum, and or even the, the one that I have mentioned that uh, Kenya Institute of Curriculum Development has tried to come up with. Uh, Autism is a lifelong development disorder that impairs the ability to communicate and interact. Uh, my name is Sarah Jamal. I'm 33. I am director of Autism Support Center and I also work as the behavior modification therapist here. Uh, we do a lot of interviews like this, uh, a lot of news channels, uh, different media channels. Um, I send out newsletters with lots of information. Uh, I speak in different places, schools, community centers, um, mosques, just trying to spread the awareness of what autism is, how it can be treated. So the three of us um, just got together and created this organization to try and um, you know, raise the awareness. And I found this in the many years that I've lived here that it's changed drastically. Many more people know about autism, more people are accepting it. There's still a negative stigma, but it's not quite as bad as it was mm -hmm. years ago. But when you look at a person with Down syndrome and a person with autism, Down syndrome is more, autism is more of a hidden disorder. Mm -hmm. So a person, other, other than their behavior, and maybe a lack of verbal skills, the, a lack of social skills, you don't know if there's anything amiss with that person. But someone with Down syndrome, they have certain facial characteristics things like that that make it obvious that the Down syndrome is present. Well, I mean, we do similar uh, therapies as like the occupational therapy. It's, that's not hard, that's not something that's hard to come by. You can get it at any hospital and a lot of places do the OT. Mm -hmm. um, then there are a couple places that do ABA, which is Applied Behavior Analysis, which is similar to behavior modification. Mm -hmm. So I guess in those respects, we, you know, we do kind of do things similarly. But at the same time, we're strictly just a therapy center, rather than most places function as a school. Like the child comes in the morning, uh, they work in groups, they work with teachers, they do schoolwork, and they're there for the day. So rather, people come here, they might spend two hours maximum, mm -hmm. and they would do a one-on-one -on -one controlled therapy session. So in that way, we're different than other centers. Mm -hmm. That again kind of goes depends on the abilities of the person. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one very common diet that we follow uh, for kids with autism is gluten and casein free. Gluten being uh, that, that what's found in wheat products, so bread, pasta, uh, chapati, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, and casein is the protein you find in mammal milk. And so kids with autism, they tend to be very sensitive in the gut. So things like lactose intolerant, gluten allergies, those things can affect them. And, and when they have, they take these foods, it can really exacerbate any behavior, I mean like a hyperactive behavior, aggressive behavior, inability to focus. But this doesn't go for every child. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we recommend first to seek, parents seek a nutritionist. Because a nutritionist will be able to tell you this is what will work best for your child. Mm -hmm. But 
we do recommend trying to remove these foods for at least one month. Mm -hmm. If you don't see a difference after that one month and if the behavior is still just the same as before, then it obviously doesn't affect the child. Mm -hmm. So things we also limit are sugar and caffeine. Mm -hmm. Kids with autism tend to be uh, more hyperactive and they have uh, more trouble with focusing and attention and concentration. So sugar and caffeine, you know, they affect these, these things. So we try, we say limit those, and then you want to give, you want to give foods that are rich in uh, vitamin B, vitamin C, there's a, a nutrient called choline. All these things are very good for brain function, memory, and all those. So things like broccoli, cauliflower, uh, fatty fishes, nuts and seeds, chia seeds, things like that, you know. So we try to encourage, it's hard because when you have a child, with autism, they tend to be even fussier eaters than normal kids. Mm -hmm. So a fussy eater is not going to eat cauliflower. Mm -hmm. but you, so you have to be a bit creative about how you give these foods. But And then going along with the exercise, um, if you have a child on the spectrum that's very hyperactive and has trouble focusing, and uh, if they do a lot of the self-stimulating behaviors, we, we say it's good to give them a, a sensory diet. or um, they are their exercises, and they're things like jumping on a trampoline or a mattress or couch, uh, doing some heavy lifting, climbing a rope, swinging on a swing, um, riding a bike, um, chores around the house, playing in water, all these things to uh, fulfill extrasensory input. And doing these things regularly through the day, maybe every hour, every two hours, will help the child feel calmer, they'll self-regulate. They'll be able to concentrate for more, for longer. Their attention span becomes greater. So it's not necessarily exercise, you can make it fun. And the sensory diet is very important for people on the spectrum. Kids with autism that have aggressive behaviors, mostly, mostly you see aggressive behaviors when you have someone who can't communicate effectively. So if you have a child that's nonverbal and they want to tell you something, they want to express something and they don't know how, the aggressive behaviors will come out. Sometimes um, the aggressive behaviors are just a by the way. Like uh, you have a child that's fully verbal, but just uh, it hits. And they're looking for a reaction from the person they're hitting. They also might like the way it feels. So it does happen. Um, as a behavior modifier, the best thing that a teacher is faced with, and then aggression over is others, it's important for teachers and other parents to try not to bring too much attention to the behavior and to redirect the behavior to something else. So rather than the child hitting you, they hit a pillow or they hit a punching bag. You have some, you put something between you and the child to protect yourself, mm -hmm. and then you're redirecting that child's aggressive attention to an inanimate, inanimate object. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have a child that's doing self harm, it could be they're overwhelmed, mm -hmm. with maybe sensory overwhelmed, or they cannot, like I said, communicate what they're feeling or what they want, so they start biting and pulling their hair and hitting their heads. And um, that's when you need to teach the child how to self-regulate or to calm themselves down. So maybe Autism affects the levels of social interaction, and from a young age, some children may find it difficult in making friends and relationships. Every child or adult affected with autism spectrum disorder has unique abilities, symptoms, and challenges. While some have shown general awareness on autism, the lack of knowledge about the syndrome and its effects to those involved is really unfortunate. When a child comes, we have to do assessment, and uh, most of these children, sometimes because of their uh, uh, behaviors or 
they, they, they have uh, maybe they have been traumatized, they have been uh, beaten, people never understand them, even the parents themselves never understand them. Test the, uh, the child, first we are able to minimize the negative behaviors that they, they have acquired through the stigmatization that uh, even the parents have at home and even for them. So what we do first, after we, are, we have been able to assess them, we are able to go to the level of the child or the phenomenological world of the child. And with that, we are able to bring uh, different levels of emotional uh, development that determines and reacts with the different situation. So we have uh, to identify so that we can be able to have uh, intervention skills. Yes, because this, uh, most of these uh, parents who have uh, OTD children uh, or children living in, with autism, uh, first they are so much stigmatized because of even the environment where they live and even their, their unstable, uh, maybe environment, their unstable, um, the, the unstable insecurity, they have emotional uh, instability. So what we do first, we are able to, when we identify where the, the, the child and where the, the parent is, we are able now to intervene through counseling sessions and we work with the, with the parents because first, uh, when you want to work well with the child, first you have to work with the parents. Because at the end of it all, the parents will have carried the burden. And uh, working together as a team, from parents, from a teacher, from a therapist, from an occupation therapist, we are able to move all together. Autistic adults and children have a beautiful mind and they are beyond talented in what they do. Since each is blessed with unique abilities, in today's society we should aim to love one another and avoid treating autistic in stigmatized ways since they are a part and parcel of our society and they all deserve love and understanding.